EXTJS is likely the most popular JavaScript library when it comes to enterprise web application programming. It's been said that EXTJS is to the enterprise sites as jQuery is to the consumer sites. You can do amazing things with EXTJS, and this video will show you how. I'm Peter Kellner with Pluralsight, and it's my pleasure to teach EXTJS fundamentals. Do you love typing div tags nested seven deep combined with tags table, th, tr, td, ul, li, and adding custom classes and styles to those? Then stop right here. This is not the video for you. Head back to the Pluralsight main page and search for something else. If, on the other hand, you don't enjoy directly programming the DOM on a browser-by-browser -browser basis, if you prefer clean abstractions that allow you with minimal JavaScript code to create feature-rich web applications that work pixel-perfect across all popular browsers, then stay right here and be prepared for the next several hours to learn Sench's EXTJS JavaScript library, a library written by some of the smartest internet engineers on our planet. So now that we've looked at a trivial JavaScript application written in EXTJS, let's look at one a little more complicated. Okay, a lot more complicated. Essentially, this is the app we're going to build, or close to the app we're going to build, in modules 6 to 10. First, we're going to build it on a one-page app, like we just shown, and then we're going to actually divide it up into, really, a full MVC with separate JavaScript modules web application. I'm going to show you that completely blown out multi multiple file web application just so you get an appreciation for where we're headed and the sorts of things you can do with EXTJS. So we're now in Visual Studio looking at an application that we've built with EXTJS. This is essentially the session editor that people for CodeCamp will actually use when they want to add sessions and they want to edit their sessions. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got the browser container obviously running in a viewport, and we have all our sessions grouped by time. So you can see here we have 24 sessions at 945, 25 at 1115, 27 at 145, etc. If I want to drill down into those sessions, let's hit the plus key, I can see all the sessions that happen at 1115. When I select one, Notice it shows me at the bottom here who the presenter is, and on the right, it shows me essentially what it's going to look like on the website. So as I click through the different sessions, you can see it's going to automatically bring up that data live from the server, all the different speakers. And when I go back to the group by, I can look at any time and basically drive through those different sessions. In addition, as the as the event organizer, when I click on a session, I can press the edit button up here and it'll pop up a form. Notice it grays out the background so I can't edit that form while I'm working on that session. I can change the level from beginning to intermediate. I can change the, the text if I want to put some extra stuff in here. If say I want to change the title from building to capital building for some reason. And then when I save, it's going to automatically come back and will update that session appropriately. See here it now says building because that update actually went into effect. I can add a new session. It actually knows I'm the logged in user, so when I press add, it's going to automatically add it for me. Notice the save button is actually grayed out because I haven't done anything yet. Until I actually do something, it doesn't pop up. So let me get rid of that. I can say my new session and it'll automatically create that. I can pick the type. And in this case, I'm just going to cancel and have nothing happen. And here, it notices that I've typed stuff in and I haven't saved my changes. So I can say, save your changes. No, I don't want to save my changes. We have splitter bar, so we can configure the actual width of different things. We can change the, we can change the amount of sessions shown up here and the presenters below. And of course, as we change the browser size, we also get the appropriate behavior. Unlike, uh, no notice that as I change the browser size, I have certain minimums set. The proportions of the different areas laid out actually changes. Notice the center line actually moving as I change it in the same proportion that I set it up originally. In addition, I can collapse regions. So I can say, oh, I don't want to see the sessions. Notice when I did that, it 
wrote the lines vertically as opposed to horizontally. Again, bring it back, it automatically grows it, it animates it in, same thing, same thing with presenter presenters here. And the direction is configurable, so you can configure it to go up versus down, versus right, versus left. A lot of flexibility and a lot of capability. So before, we built a simple one-page JavaScript application with all the JavaScript just simply between two script, a script start and a script end tag, only barely 20 lines of code. Let's now take a look at that application that's really a more real-world application. I mean, really, who wants just a simple list of sessions that you can sort? That's not very useful. So let's take a look at the actual application that we built that has all that extra capability. So for convenience, I've actually put the whole application in this working directory you can see right here. So if I double click on working, you can see now everything in this working directory is that application. The index file, which we look at here, is simply the script tags and the CSS tags, and it also has just one JavaScript include app.js. So what will happen is if you do a view source while you're running that application, this is actually all you'll see, practically nothing. Everything is dynamically loaded. So let's take a look at what else we have. Well, first, that app.js, you kind of have to assume that's really the glue. And if I look at that, that app.js, it does have a launch function, but all that launch function does is it creates a view, which we're calling our main view. And then above it, we have all these definitions of all the different views, controllers, and stores. So for example, all these different views, main view, details view, presenter, session, sessions, form. Well, main view is actually all the launch application is pointing to. So when main view gets fired up, it knows to look at that in the views directory underneath apps. So notice we're kind of zooming over here. We have our main view. And this main view essentially pulls all the panels together. This whole main view.js is very short and it's very simple. This is the whole file. It basically says create a layout management, create some vertical and horizontal boxes to put those layouts in, put the sessions, put the presenters, and put the details all in different parts of the display. And so then you're wondering, well, I wonder what Sessions is. Well, Sessions actually has a way of pointing to this over here, Sessions. And that this Sessions looks very similar to what we showed as our real simple application, but it has extra features for things like grouping and showing, showing a docking panel with an edit button on it, just a bunch of extra features. But essentially, if you look at the complete application, we have all these different JavaScript files. We have controllers where all the logic. So if I look at the session controller, that has logic for things like what happens when a grid panel item is selected. That is, it shows the presenters at the bottom. It displays the HTML. What happens when the edit button is clicked on session item edit click? All these different things. And those all happen from the controller. And then we have our definitions of things like, well, where is the actual data? And where what is in the data? So I have models. So for sessions, we have all these different fields. In the model, it tells us where the data is stored. Similar to where we looked before, it's in slash data slash ext sessions.json, the type of proxy. The stores define things like how is the data sorted. So for example, when we look at sessions, our, by default, our Data is sorted first by session time, then by title. So we have all this capability in all these different JavaScript files that come together to form the complete app. So it's very powerful and gives you a lot of, a lot of handles and a lot of tools to grab different parts of the program and, of course, make the program grow in a very elegant way.